For this e-learning art project, you are going to be creating something that's going to show the element of space. This is a picture drawn using a very key art concept called One Point Perspective. This is an aquarium tunnel. For more about this project, keep watching. Drawing in 3D using One Point Perspective. The element of space allows an artist to show depth on a flat surface, and you already know about these techniques, we've learned these before, overlapping, creating grounds like foreground, middle ground, and background, and size changes, how things are larger in the front and smaller in the back. The element of space allows an artist to show depth on a flat surface, and this is where we will be learning our new technique, drawing using one-point perspective. One-point perspective is a drawing method that shows how things appear to get smaller as they get further away. You've already known about this. Things get smaller when they get farther away. But learning one-point perspective will show us why. Take a look at the picture. That line is showing how the edge of the box is actually aiming towards a point in the background. And when every edge of the box aims towards that certain point, the lines merge towards a single vanishing point on the horizon line. That red dot is known as the vanishing point, and that horizontal line you already know is called the horizon line. And when all of the lines from all of the objects go towards that point, we get perspective. We get that these things now look like they are all merging into the distance. Our brain sees that as looking and seeing depth. In this picture, there's our vanishing point. And I'm starting with the sidewalk. I can see the edges of the sidewalk both line up and go towards that vanishing point. It does that on both sides of the road. It makes it look like the sidewalk is larger in the front of the picture and smaller as it goes towards the back. I can even see this in the row of trees. You'll notice that the trees are getting smaller as they go into the distance. The top of the tree line is going towards the vanishing point. And I can even see how the artist has used this technique to draw those lines that are painted down the center of the road. So now it's your turn. You are going to get ready to draw in 3D by using one point perspective. Now, perhaps you are not familiar with an aquarium tunnel. There are a few places in the world that have these really amazing aquariums that you actually walk under or inside, and you can see the fish and the sea life swimming all around you, even over the top of your head. Here, I have a quick video to show you. Isn't that amazing? I'd love to go see one sometime. In the meantime, though, I'm just going to have to make my own. I think this will be really fun. Plus, you get to choose what kind of sea life and creatures you want to put in your aquarium. To get started on the drawing part, um, we're going to keep it very simple. You will need a piece of paper. I know that some of you might have drawing books or sketchbooks at home. You can totally use a piece of paper from that. I'm just going to use a regular piece of white paper that I took from my family printer, if you have a printer at home. If you don't have any just regular white paper like that, be creative. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. Here's a piece of mail that I can turn over and use the white side on the back. Here is some homework that my son brought home that's been graded. He doesn't need this anymore. Use the back of some old homework that you might have. And you can, of course, even use a piece of notebook paper. 
It has lines on it, but that's okay. We're just going to be creative. We're going to use our brain and we're going to learn something new. It doesn't really matter what we're drawing it on. Now, of course, you will need a pencil. A little bit later, you'll need some coloring supplies, and so we'll talk about that later. But for this first part, you are going to need a straight edge. Now, I have a ruler. It's kind of a longish ruler, so ruler would be perfect. If you don't have a ruler, you could use, um, actually, this is the easiest thing. This is just a binder. I'm going to open it up. I'm going to use that straight edge across the bottom because it's nice and long, and it's very straight. I'm going to use that to be my straight edge. I don't need to measure anything. I just need something to help me get my lines straight. All right, so here we go. We're gonna set up our paper horizontal, side to side. Grab that pencil, let's get started. All right, remember, for this project, you have to have your paper horizontal, side to side, on the table in front of you before you start drawing. Now the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw with the straight edge an X through the center of my paper. I'm going to connect this corner to this corner with a very straight line and this corner to this corner. I'm going to demonstrate this for you at first using the notebook because I know some of you will need to use that. But then I'm going to switch to my ruler just because it takes up less space in my board and you'll be able to see what I'm doing a little bit easier. So corner to corner. I'm going to put my pencil on that corner and I'm going to get this corner lined up under my notebook and then I'm just going to trace that edge so that when I pull that away it's a very straight line corner to corner. Now that you know how to do that I'm going to switch to my ruler because like you can see a lot better now and I'm going to do that to the other side. So for a first step just one big X, and when you move your ruler away or your notebook, that point in the center becomes our vanishing point. Now, pause the video, do those steps, and then press play again as soon as you're ready. This portion of our picture is going to be the floor, the walkway inside the tunnel. And what we have to do next is we have to make the walls and the ceiling. To do this, we're going to need to get our straight edge again. This time it doesn't have to be quite so long. Um, I'm gonna use just a piece of mail that hasn't been opened because that's nice and short and it's gonna give me a nice straight edge. I want this line, I'm gonna draw a line from the floor straight up to that line and I want this to be vertical, not slanted this way or this way, vertical. So I'm gonna choose a distance from my vanishing point. I'm just gonna pick some, I'm gonna put it right here and I'm going to line that up and I'm going to keep an eye on this. And I want this to be vertical and I'm going to draw from the floor to that line of the X, perfectly straight using a straight edge. And then I'm going to make a matching one on the other side. So however long this distance is, I wanna try, I'm gonna eyeball it, and I'm gonna to try to get that same distance. So I'm gonna mark that with a little dot. I'm gonna put my straight edge up there, get it nice and straight, not slanted, and I'm going to repeat. I'm going to trace like that. Now I'm going to make the dome roof. This line is not going to be straight, so I don't need my straight edge. But I am going to try to make it as smooth and domed as possible. It's gonna come from this, and it's going to go to this, but I wanna kind of get it nice and even, not lopsided, perfect. Now I'm going to do one of those again. So I'm going to push my straight edge over here, however far you want it to be. It probably should be about that same distance. So probably about right there. This line is going to be parallel with this line, which means they are the same distance away, not ever slanting together or, or away from each other. And I'm going to connect the same. I'm going to connect the bottom, the floor line, to the ceiling line, completely vertical. See how those two are parallel. And then I'm going to repeat on the other side over here. So I'm gonna give myself a starting point. 
use my straight edge. I put my straight edge on this side so that I can see what I'm doing. If I put my straight edge on this side, it's completely covered up. Everything I'm trying to match up and keep straight, I can't see. So think this through. I'm going to put this here, making sure that that is going to be parallel with this and draw. And then I'm going to need a new ceiling line or dome line. For this, I want it to be parallel with this. Now that's not a straight line, so it's going to be a little sketchy. So I'm going to sketch a little bit, watching this, trying to keep these the same. I like to skip around. It helps me keep things even. So I'm going to come over here, sketch here, watching this, trying to get these the same. And then when I meet in the middle, I should have a pretty consistent match between those two lines. And I should have room for one more set of these lines. So I'm gonna come down here, make another vertical line that is parallel with the one I did last time, connecting the floor line to the ceiling line. Same thing over here, make a match, vertical, parallel, and then this time I'm going to run out of space. I'm going to go off the top of my paper. That's fine. But I'm going to still try to keep this a good match parallel with that. Use your pencil, sketch it out so that it's easier to erase if you make a mistake. Perfect. Now my walls and my ceiling of my dome are complete. The next thing we're going to talk about is what to do with the floor. You can see already that it is already starting to look like this is a room that is going back into the distance. So the walls here will be made out of glass and outside there will be my aquarium. The floor, however, is indoors. And so I'm going to create a design on my floor, just a checkerboard floor type design. For this, I'm going to need my straight edge again. This is the vanishing point right here. So the lines that I'm going to be starting with are all going to be merging to that point. In fact, I'm going to darken that and I'll make it right there so I don't forget. I'm going to use my straight edge and I'm going to draw lines that come to the front edge of my paper. This here, the bottom edge of my paper. And every line is going to go to the vanishing point. In fact, I'm just going to turn my mail and keep that part on the vanishing point that comes to the front of my paper. Turn it a little bit more to the vanishing point, to the front edge of my paper. And I'm gonna keep doing this. I'm, I'm just gonna do it one more time until I have several <coughs> sections of floor <coughs> that look like they are merging into the back or receding into the distance. It looks like a really long hallway that goes on and on forever and ever. That's exactly what I want. Now, I'm gonna do like a checkerboard pattern floor. So now I'm going to use my straight edge and I'm going to do some horizontal lines this time. Very horizontal, not slanted this way or this way, horizontal. I'm going to start way back in the distance and I'm just going to draw a line across the floor. My line is not going into the windows. It is staying on the floor. And then I'm going to pull my straight edge down a little bit, make another horizontal line from the floor on this side to the floor line on this side. A little bit more. And I think I have room for one more. It's a good thing I might Straight edge is almost a little bit too short here. There we go. Now I'm going to take a break from drawing and I'm going to do a little bit of coloring. We're going to color this floor. Now I'm going to, to do a little bit of coloring on this, but let's talk about this for a moment because you're at home and I don't know what coloring supplies you have at home. And I'm not sure if you thought on that last day of school before they sent us home, if you thought about taking any of your coloring supplies with you or not. So let's talk about some things that we could use. Um, I do happen to have some random colored pencils. You probably do. You need to think about 
what art supplies are at your house? You know, last year at the end of the school year, when you take all of your stuff home, all of your old crayons, all of your old markers, where is all that stuff now? Did it get put into a cabinet somewhere? You might have forgotten about it, but I bet you do have some supplies at your house. Another thing to think about is what's down in the bottom of your book bag or brother and sister's book bag. Maybe they have some supplies that you can borrow. Maybe you just need to go dig around in your kitchen drawer and figure out what's in there. Most homes have some type of coloring materials. I have a box of crayons. Um, they're probably pretty old, but they'll do fine. And I do have some random markers laying around. I don't have a full set of anything, but that's okay. Um, if worst comes to worst, you can do this entire project with just coloring with a pencil because you and I both know pencils have many different shades that they can color. Throw in an ink pen and you've got even more shades, more values that you can create. So we're going to think creatively about this. We're going to gather up the supplies that we do have and we're going to start coloring. Let's take a look and see how we're going to begin to color this floor. I know that in the future, when I get done drawing my sea creatures and animals out here, this is all water, and so that's going to be probably all blue. And so the color that I want for my floor is going to be not blue. I can You can choose any color you want. You could go black and white. Floors like this are sometimes black and white. You could do a different color, green and black, or green and red, or purple and orange, whatever, is uh, that is up to you. Just keep in mind that you're going to have a lot of blue up here. So the very first thing that you're going to do is you're going to choose whatever color it is that you are going to use, and you are going to outline all of these lines with that color. When you outline these lines, just the floor, use your straight edge, because you don't want to spend all that time getting everything nice and straight just to ruin it at this point when you are adding the color. Now, I'm going to speed things up a bit. You remember, you press pause so that you can catch up with me anytime you need to. All right, so I have outlined all of my vanishing lines, my lines that are going to the vanishing point, and I'm also going to outline those horizontal lines just on the floor. Now I'm going to spend some time coloring with this marker. By the way, I don't have to be using a marker. You may be using something completely different right now, but I'm using a marker for this time. Um, and I'm going to spend some time coloring. This is an alternating pattern, which means I'm going to color one purple, skip one, color one, skip one, and then my next row will be alternating. Take a look. I'm going to go fast. Press pause whenever you need to. So now I have my first color complete. My alternating color is going to be a different color. This time I'm switching supplies. I'm going to use a crayon for this. You can choose to color with whatever you want. This is just my personal choice based on what I have and what I want. I'm still remembering though, I'm going to stay away from blue because I know I'm already going to have a lot of blue out there. I think I'll find a pink. Here we go. Thank you. 
All right, and now my floor is complete. That was a nice coloring break. Now we're gonna talk about how to color what's inside the aquarium, what's outside our hallway. And for this next part, you're going to need a couple of things. You will need this file from your computer. Mine is printed out, yours will not be printed out. You will just have to look at your computer screen and bring this up. You will also need, if you have one, a die, which is short, which is singular for dice. Um, if you may or you may not have a dice, look in your game cabinet. If you have any games at home, you can borrow a dice from a game that you already have. Just don't forget to put it back when you're done. Or as we get into the... Uh, as I get into showing you how to do this, I'll talk you through how to do this if you don't have a dice. We're going to decide what goes into our aquarium using this dice, kind of like a game. Let's take a look at this page. So it's a roll a masterpiece, roll one, roll two, roll three, four, and five. And each one of those rolls corresponds with a type of ocean life. So on your first roll, you're going to be rolling for what fish is going to be drawn in your aquarium. So on my first roll, if I were to roll a four, I would come down here to the four and that chooses my fish for me. So then I would be drawing a butterfly fish anywhere I want to in my aquarium. My second roll would be choosing some plants and coral. So whatever I land on for my second roll, that's what I will choose to draw in my aquarium. Third roll is going to give you a creature with tentacles. The fourth roll is going to be an ocean mammal. And your fifth roll is going to be some type of crustacean. So you will be creating five different creatures, at least, to create inside your aquarium. Please pardon this interruption. I almost forgot to tell you what to do if you don't have a dice. Easy. You just need a person. You just need to say, hey mom, what's a number between one and six? And then she would say five. And then you would say five. There's the thing that you're going to add to your aquarium. Or if you don't even have anybody nearby, and just pick one. You know that you're going to choose a fish first. If you don't have a dice and you don't have anybody to help you, just pick your favorite fish out of the column. Easy. You know your second thing is going to be plants and coral. When it's time to draw plants and coral, just pick one from the list. Easy peasy. You can do it with the dice. It's kind of fun. You totally don't have to. All right, I'm ready for roll number one. This is going to choose my fish. So I'm rolling and I land on three. So I am going to draw roll number one, three on my dice, a shark. Now you have a choice here. You can draw this exact shark from this paper. Um, on your computer screen, it's going to be pretty small, so you'll want to enlarge it so that you can see the picture better. Or, if you don't like this shark, or you really want to draw a hammerhead shark or some other specific type of shark, you can just Google that particular kind of shark, find a picture, and then draw it onto your aquarium. So, let me cut in here for just a moment to make something perfectly clear. You are not going to trace anything for this project. Do not place your paper up against your computer screen and trace those things off of the file. You draw them yourself. Art teachers have a way of knowing when people are trying to cheat the system. Don't do that. So, watch me. I'm going to draw a shark. Now your first roll might not be shark. You don't have to draw a shark for your first creature. You draw whatever your dice lands on. Shark, coming up. First thing I have to decide is where in my aquarium do I want this shark to be? 
he's kind of turned, so I think I will put him, I'm looking sort of at his belly, so I think I'm going to put him up here so it looks like he's over the top of us. Here goes. Now, like with anything, I don't know how to draw a shark. I don't draw sharks every day. So I'm just going to look at this picture. I'm going to look for the things that I do know how to draw, particular types of lines, particular types of shapes, and I'm not going to worry if it doesn't look exactly like that shark because it will still be a shark. It'll be fine. Just do your best. I have my shark. One thing that I would normally tell you if we were drawing in class is if I'm drawing over the top of something, I should erase those lines. But in this picture, that's different because this is actually the building and the building lines are in front of that fish. So I actually need those lines to stay there. And so I don't have to, I don't have to erase anything. I did have to erase this portion of the um, shark's back because it was behind his own fin. But these lines, the lines of the building, the lines that are holding all of these ferocious sea creatures away from you inside this hallway, those need to stay there. So no need to erase any of those. All right, one shark done. Four more rolls. Roll number two is going to be my plants and coral. Easy. I got two. So I come here to two. And that gives me this. I don't know what this is, but it looks okay to draw. I do know that plants are gonna be on the ground, not randomly floating around like fish would be. So I'm going to draw a few of those, even though it only shows one, I'm gonna draw a few uh, down here around my floor lines on both sides. Here goes. <laughs> And plants done. Roll number three is going to give me a creature with tentacles. Now please remember, you're watching me draw, you're watching me roll the dice, choose my animal, pick what to make, but please know that your numbers will be different and your drawings will be different. You're doing this along with me, pressing pause and play whenever you need to. All right, first row, Ooh, I get to draw a giant squid. Excellent. All right, roll number four is going to be my mammal. I got six, so a great blue whale. Now I'm kind of running out of space, so I'm not gonna to try to fit the entire whale. I think I will draw about half the whale coming in on this side, because you know, a great blue whale is the largest creature, I think maybe on Earth. So he's obviously not gonna be able to fit inside my picture. So I'm gonna put as much of him as I can in the picture, leaving the rest to the imagination. One more roll for me for the crustaceans. Four. Oh, a starfish. Easy peasy. Now I just have to figure out where a starfish would need to be. And since a starfish is pretty simple, I might put two. In fact, I think I might put my starfish like they're suctioned onto the glass. Maybe I'll put one right here and one right here. Now this is the back of the starfish which I'm going to be showing the belly of the starfish. So I'm going to need to go Google what the belly of a starfish looks like. Give me a minute. I'll be right back. All right. I Googled the underside of a starfish, figured out what that looked like, and now my aquarium is complete. Now, I have done my five rolls. But when you get done with your five rolls, if you feel like you have a big empty space and you wanna fill it with another object, feel free. 
you can do two of the same thing, or you can just come over here and find something that you really wish you would have gotten. Maybe you really want to make a jellyfish, and so you use a jellyfish to fill up any extra empty, awkward looking space. Now, let's talk about how to color this. If we were at school and it was time to do the coloring on this area, you probably would be correct if you were to guess that I would have you use a skinny Sharpie like this, outline everything first, and then color it in. However, probably not everybody has a skinny Sharpie like this at home, but you probably do have some sort of ink pen. This is just a black ink pen, so that's what I'm going to do my outlining with. If you can't find a black ink pen, use a blue ink pen. If you can't find that, then just use your pencil, but press really hard so that all of these details really show up nice and bold. All right, so I just finished up all of my outlining. You will notice that I have not yet outlined the structure of the building. I will do that almost at the very, very end. Now, after we trace things, even if we're just using a pen, we always have to erase things. So take a moment. You might have to go around your house and find an eraser, find a pencil with an eraser. Or maybe you already, maybe you have an eraser, a, a nice chunk of an eraser like we use at school, and you're going to just tidy up all of your outlining. Do not out, do not erase these lines these are still in pencil make sure that you keep all of these even the ones that are inside the animal bodies don't let those disappear we're just looking to erase areas where we just didn't stay on our tracing line as good as we could have take a moment and do some erasing press pause so that you can catch up and then press play as soon as you're done There, I think I'm about finished up with my erasing. So now, to talk about how we're gonna color this. I have at least five creatures on here that need to be colored, plus the background. I'm not worried about the background yet. The creatures, the plants. I am going to color, I think, with colored pencils. I have a handful of colored pencils, I also have crayons. I am going to color with things that are small, because these creatures and all of their details are small-ish. So anything that I can sharpen, like these pencils or crayons, if I have a sharpener, I am going to have the best luck staying inside the lines and doing my best job of coloring with that type of tool. Now, you might have an amazing set of markers if you've got the skinny ones. I don't have any of those here. Um, but if you do and you want to use those, then use those. You need to use whatever you have available to you and whatever you're comfortable using because you need to have fun doing this. So you're pretty much the boss of this next coloring step. So take a while, do your best work. I don't want this to be finished in like five minutes. Take your time, do a good job. If you don't know what color a giant squid is or what color a starfish is, what are you going to do? Google, find some images, let that be your inspiration, and then get, get coloring. So I have just finished coloring all of the creatures in my aquarium. The only things that I have not done yet are tracing the lines for the windows and coloring the background. But before I get to those things, I want to point out a couple of things that I did in my coloring that I want you to think about. First of all, you see on this whale here how I added some shading. This was colored pencil that I used on this. And so you can see in here that I have layered a little bit of purple and a little bit of blue to create some shading. So I think that this is something that you should be able to do. So I want you to think about challenging yourself and coming up with some places where you can add some shading. I have some shading here. 
on my squid. Um, but you don't have to do it everywhere. I don't have any shading down here on the seaweed. Another thing I want to point out is this area right here. You will notice that on that seaweed right here, I don't have any color at all. And I wanted to point that out because some of you might not have very many colorful coloring tools at home. And so you may need to use pencil for your coloring. And so I wanted to show that that is totally possible because a pencil, like I said before, can color in many different shades. You can leave the lines showing so you get a little bit of a texture or a little bit of a pattern. You can do shading so that you get a variety of values. You could do this entire thing with just a pencil if you had to, if you needed to. I think it would look quite nice. So don't think, oh, I can't do this because I don't have any crayons. You totally can do it. It just takes a little bit of creative thinking. Now, moving on, let's discuss what happens next. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm finally going to outline those lines that are holding this whole aquarium up. And for this, I want to use a tool that is bold. Ideally, a Sharpie would be great. If you have a Sharpie, that's awesome. If you don't have a Sharpie, but you do have a thick marker of some kind, like this Crayola, this is the one I used on my floor, so I think that would look nice, then a thick marker would be good. If you don't have any markers, then the next best thing would be a dark colored crayon. I don't think my crayon set has, oh, there's black. I could do black, or I could do a dark purple. So crayon, pressing heavily, that would be logical as well. I think I'm going to use my Sharpie, since I have one, and all I'm going to do is simply outline those lines. As you are outlining these lines, remember, these are in front of the fish and the creatures. You will be drawing directly over the top of your drawing and coloring. Now, with these straight lines, I want to get my straight edge back out because I do want those to be very straight. Now, the only thing that's left is for me to color the water. All of that is going to be blue. I want to avoid the same color of blue of anything else that I have already made blue. And I also wanna choose a tool that's going to allow me to work quickly because that's a large area. So I'm going to choose crayon because I can color quickly with a crayon and it still looks nice. All right, I think I'm finished. Once you have completely filled in the background with your shade of blue or whatever water, whatever tool you have chosen for water, and it is complete, then you are finished with this e-learning project. So I hope that you had a good time with this. I hope that by the time it's done, you have created something that you can be proud of. Now don't forget, you need to send me a photograph of your finished artwork. You can take it with Photo Booth on your computer. Make sure that you remember those things about taking a good photograph that I told you about. Um, you can also have someone take a photograph with their phone or iPad and they can email it or text it to me. I hope that this has taken your mind off of the weird stuff happening in our world right now. And I can't wait to see what you have come up with.